Hey everyone, it's Colin, how's it going? In some previous episodes, we've talked about ways to do kind of quicker, more streamlined installations for retro versions of Windows. This time we're gonna do the same, but for older versions of Mac OS X. Now, consider this scenario. Let's say you got your hands on a retro PowerPC-based Mac that natively runs OS X, something like an iMac G4 or a Titanium PowerBook G4 like I have here in front of me. It has a working install, but you wanna wipe it fresh and, and start over with the version of your choosing. Now, normally you would get a DVD or CD of the operating system and install it that way, but let's say maybe the optical drive in the computer isn't quite working right. That's actually the case with this PowerBook. So what would you do? Well, most people would think, oh, okay, I'll just build like a USB flash drive installer and boot off of that like you would on a modern computer. Well. The wrinkle is that these PowerPC-based Macs generally won't boot off of USB. Not that you'd really want to anyway, simply because a lot of them shipped with USB 1 interfaces instead of USB 2, which would be just incredibly slow to boot and install an OS from. So this time, we're gonna talk about this interface that kind of flew under the radar for a lot of people, but is incredibly useful to take advantage of on these sorts of Macs. It's called Firewire. You've probably heard of it. It had a few other names as well. It actually became an industry standard even though Apple was heavily involved in its development. Most people who had some experience with Firewire simply used it as a way to connect like a digital camcorder to their computer to import footage. But it's useful for a lot of other things including hooking up simple peripherals like external hard drives. And that's gonna be the key to what I'm gonna show you today. I went out and picked up one of these. This is a portable FireWire hard drive. It's basically an IDE laptop drive with a FireWire bridge board on the back. It's bus powered, so you only need to hook one cable up to it. And the most important thing is that FireWire is bootable on these older PowerPC based Macs. Now to make a bootable OS X installer off of one of these drives, we're gonna use a built-in tool. We'll get to that in a second. First, I'm gonna hook this drive up and then we're gonna partition it. Okay, in disk utility, I'm going to go with two partitions. The first one is gonna be for installing OS X from. It's gonna be our bootable installer. The second one is gonna be to make a full OS X like installation that actually runs the entire environment. We'll get to that in a little bit. So I'm gonna give the installation partition a name and then we'll go with uh, four gigabytes of space. That should be plenty. Now I have an image for the install DVD of macOS 10.4 Tiger, but it's in this .cdr format. It's pretty much the same thing as .iso. In fact, you can like rename the extension and programs that can deal with ISOs will read it just fine. The problem is this .cdr and .iso, they're not compatible with the tool that I'm gonna use to make this external drive bootable. So the image needs to get converted first. This machine is currently running OS 10.2 Jaguar. So I'm gonna launch a tool called Disk Copy and we'll use it to save this image file in the DMG format. Uh, you can go with either read only or rewrite. Both are, are fine for this purpose. So that's gonna take a few minutes to crank through. And then when it's done, I can launch Terminal. In newer versions of OS X, there are some nice graphical tools available to do this, uh, mostly done through disk utility. So if you'd prefer to just have kind of drag and drop simplicity, that's gonna be the way to do it. This version of OS X doesn't have those, so I'm gonna do it all through the command line. Now, the tool that I'm gonna use is called ASR, which is short for Apple Software Restore. It lets you write disk images to physical volumes. You see, you can't just copy the files themselves over. You can't just mount this disk image and just drag and drop all the files because there's metadata that needs to come over and other steps that have to get done to make a volume bootable on the Mac. ASR will do all of that for you. So the command syntax is actually pretty simple. It's just sudo asr-source, 
and then the path to the disk image. Now, if you don't know or want to type that path in, here's a cool trick. You can just drag and drop the file from anywhere in the finder into the terminal window and it'll autofill that path for you. It can save you a lot of time. So then we just do dash target and then the path to the disk and then two important arguments after that. The first is dash erase, which will format the target volume first, and then dash no check, which lets you skip having to check some the source image first, just saves you some time. So then I hit enter, put in my password, and off it goes. So the dash erase argument is really important because it'll do a block by block copy of the data from the image to the drive. This will make the copy, of course, go faster since it's all sequential reads and writes, but it's also what makes the drive bootable in the end. Without dash erase, it'll do a file by file copy, which is slower, and I've had bad luck booting from volumes that were written to that way. So, okay, that's done. It just took a few minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and reboot this computer and then hold down the option key to get the boot picker. After a moment, yep, okay, here we go. Our new install volume on the Firewire drive is showing up, so we can just select it and it will boot into the OS X installer. So here's where that second partition on this drive comes into play. I'm actually gonna install Tiger onto it. Now I want a pretty minimal installation, so you can click this Customize button and it'll let you remove stuff that you don't need or want. You can keep specific languages or just leave only English. And I'm gonna remove all these extras like printer drivers and apps like iTunes. BSD subsystem is kind of interesting because it's got some useful CLI tools, so I'll keep that. And off it goes. Now this install process should be quick because it's just coming from one partition and going over to the other on this drive it's only gonna be about five minutes. It's way faster than installing off of an optical disc. Okay, now I'm at this first run screen and here's a quick tip. You don't need to fill in this registration info. If you just try to click continue, it's going to prompt you to fill it in. So the way to get around it is to press Command Q on the keyboard and then you can click this skip button in the dialog box that shows up. All right, now I just create an account and then I'll set the time zone. Don't mind the clock, the backup battery on this laptop is dead. And now we booted off the Firewire drive into a full install of 10.3 Panther? Um, so another suggestion might be to take care when naming and organizing your disk images so you uh, so you don't get them mixed up. But this just goes to show that the ASR process works across many versions of OS X. In fact, I've heard of people putting even more partitions on an external drive like this, one for each different version of OS X, so you can take this between a whole bunch of different machines and boot them into whatever OS you want to reinstall or fix them up. Now, that bootable installation on here is great for loading things like diagnostic tools and utilities for fixing and, you know, troubleshooting these old machines. But it can also be really useful for another function. Think about this scenario. You've got the machine set up exactly the way you want, right? It's the perfect retro computing experience for you. You've got all your programs and games and everything on here. And then you realize the hard drive is almost full. You need to physically swap the drive out so you can get some more space, but you don't really want to go through the process of setting all that stuff up again. Well, ASR isn't good for just the OS X installer. It's great for basically restoring any disk image to any volume. So what you could do is boot off of one of these external drives with a bootable installation, capture an image of the drive in the computer, save it to this drive, go ahead and swap out the disks in the machine, and then use ASR to lay that image back down. In fact, I remember doing that years ago at work, it saved a whole bunch of time. Now, 
What if you don't anticipate needing an external firewire drive very often? Is there still any way to work around not having a working optical drive in a computer or laying an entire image down to the machine? There is. You do need to have another PowerPC based Mac at your disposal with built in firewire. But all you need in that scenario is just the firewire cable. Take your target machine and power it on while holding down the T key on the keyboard. If you do it right, that'll cause the Firewire logo to start kind of bouncing around on the screen. That puts the machine into Firewire target disk mode. If you plug one end of the Firewire cable into it and then the other end into your other Mac, what you'll notice is the drive on your target machine will just show up on the source computer. That's basically what target disk mode does is it takes a computer and more or less makes it act like an external hard drive. From there, you can then treat it like any other drive. You can lay an entire disk image down to it using ASR, or you can even skip ASR entirely, just boot the source computer off of a regular OS X disk and install a fresh copy of the OS through Firewire to your target machine. And I think it's really cool that there was some forward thinking way back when about flexibility around this interface and how it could save a whole bunch of time, not just back when these machines were new, but some tricks that can also help you out now if you're trying to get one or more vintage machines back up and running. Anyway, if you like this one, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at thisdoesnotcomp. And as always, thanks for watching.